Here we have a difficult looking polynomial inequality and we want to solve it. You know, when you solve a polynomial inequality, you're going to find some intervals where, in this case, x cubed minus x squared is greater than 9x minus 9. And actually, what we're going to do first of all is just set this thing to 0. So we have x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9 greater than or equal to 0. That way, we can think about whatever this function does, whatever crazy stuff it does, we can think about where it's above or below that x-axis. So let's actually do that first. Let's subtract 9x and add 9 to both sides. And we'll get x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. So now this polynomial, this is a problem of finding the zeros of the polynomial and then testing those regions to know whether the function is above or below the x-axis at that point. If the function has a positive value, it's above. If it has a negative value, it's below. Finding the zeros, though, um, might be a little tricky here. I think we can pull some, some uh, tricks here with factoring. Let's just do this in a couple of groups. If I look at this chunk right here, I could pull an x squared out of there. So I'm going to do that. So x squared, this would leave x minus 1. And then I'm going to pull a negative, uh, negative 9 out of here. This is actually going to work out really well. So in this chunk, I'm going to pull out a negative 9. So minus 9, and that leaves x minus 1. When you have this kind of a situation, you can regroup this. Um, this is really x squared minus 9, so these two, times x minus 1. And if you don't believe me, I mean, this is x squared times both of these things minus 9 times both of these things. That's exactly what we've got up here. You can multiply it out and see for yourself it comes out to the same thing. But now we've got this factored. This is looking great. So we can figure out our zeros pretty easily. I've got x minus 1 equals 0, so that would be at 1 as one of our, our points. And then x squared minus 9, if I set that equal to 0, I would add 9 to both sides. And I'd get x squared equals 9. And then I'd take the square root of that. And what I would get is x equals a positive or negative 3. So I've got three zeros here, three points where this um, crosses or touches the uh, x-axis. So let's go ahead and plot these on a number line. I've got negative 3, I've got 1, and I've got positive 3. So now I've got these four regions that we can test and determine whether the, the function there is greater than 0 or, or uh, less than 0. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm just going to put these numbers in um, to my function. I think I'll put it in in this factored form. That, that'll be easy enough. Let's take a negative 4 first. So a negative 4 squared, that's 16, minus 9 is 5. So that's going to be 5 times, and negative 4 minus 1 <clears throat> is negative 5. That's going to be a negative number, negative 25. So the function is below the x-axis here. It's negative. Let's try it for something in this region. I'm going to choose 0. I just get a negative 9 times a negative 1. That's a negative times a negative, or a positive. So it's definitely above there. I need a number between 1 and 3. I guess I'll take 2. So 2 squared is 4 minus 9 is a negative 5. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's negative 5 times 1. That's a negative number, negative 5. And let's choose maybe 4 for this region. So 16 minus 9 again is 5, and 4 minus 1 is 3. That's a positive number. Now, remember, we're looking for where this function is greater than or equal to 0. So we're looking at this region and this region. So we're going to start at negative 3, and I'm going to include negative 3 with the square bracket uh, because it's greater than or equal to. So the 3 is included. That's at, at negative 3. That's where it is actually 0. And this is going to go up to and include 1, because it's also 0 at 1. And then we're also going to have this region here from 3, including the 3, 
because again, it's zero there, and then all the way up to infinity. So that is how to solve a polynomial inequality with a little bit of factoring first.